Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug Bell page. Good morning, everyone. It's been a minute since we've been <laughs> sharing a camera, although that was that's not true. A we did bit it of a Friday night. Well, <laughs> we did it Friday <laughs> night. What's that up, Dennis? How first. you doing, guys? <laughs> hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag share. Put this out on your page. Let everybody know that we are here this morning. I hope you guys had a fantastic Easter. Easter. That too. Easter and Easter. That's that's the weekend and Easter combined. <laughs> Locustine and Glory and Barbie. I need Hashtag more. make it viral. Keep Hashtag talking. Weaster. I'm going to drink this. Easter. <laughs> I need some more coffee. You do? Yeah. Have you guys had a good Easter? Hashtag yep, yep. Uh, was it different? How are you guys doing? What What's the first word that comes in your mind when you hear the term COVID? Just a big sigh. That's not a word. <laughs> it's, but that's the, that's my first initial so, reaction. Michael Ragsdale, Michelle, how you doing? Candy Warren. Hey, y'all. Good to see everybody. Anybody hey, got, Anybody got a garden started? I mean, that'd be a Man. good thing to do. Right? Got some dirt. Get out in the dirt and plant a garden. Yeah. It's good to see you too, Christine. It's good to see you at the uh, love sign the other day, getting uh, your communion. Hi, Rita. Hi, everybody. What's hey, Barbie. On? Virtual hugs. <clears throat> I don't see anybody starting hey, gardens out there, though. Hit the hearts, oh, yeah. hit the lights, go crazy there, on that. Oh, here? Yeah, I, I've asked. It doesn't like oh, anybody well, is unless it we're pretty... Uh, pretty Dennis, Dennis is. Dennis has got Dennis, some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I got that. Hi, Brittany. Hello, everybody. Backyard garden <clears throat> going. Um, we're, we're going to go a little bit before the cross and remember what Jesus said. Then we're going to talk about after the cross. And, and sort of like where, you know, we talk about the crucifixion and the burial. Okay. And then we talk about the resurrection. But we don't talk about the in-between. What happened, you know, in between the crucifixion and the beginning of the resurrection. You know, we're shaking this table real bad. Oh. And the, and the beginning of the, uh, when he rose from the dead. Okay. Something else we don't talk about, though, in that manner is... When Jesus shows up to see Mary, he says one thing. In the morning, you know, on that Sunday morning when he rose from the dead, he says one thing. Okay. Don't say what it is. Okay. Then in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, almost night, he says something entirely different. No one saw Jesus between the garden tomb and when he shows up that night with his disciples. Where was he? What was he doing? What was he doing? We always talk about what the disciples were doing in those two moments between, you know, when he was in the, uh, Larry Wilson said the grounds broke. So he's ready. He's getting oh, ready. Oh, look at there. Uh, we had frost this morning is what I'm being told. It's 39 degrees outside. So we talk about him being dead and buried. And then we talk about him raising, but never talk about what was happening in between his dead and his raising. Where did he go? What did he do? But we talked about that Good Friday service, so tune into the Good Friday service. Also, uh, share this out to everybody. Get out on your page. Hashtag people's names. Not hashtag people's names. No, not hashtag. Just at people's names or just tag their name by typing their name in the comments below and then hitting send. And their name should pop up and you can just click on it and it'll tag them and then they'll get a notification that you're talking about them. <laughs> We're talking about them. <laughs> No, I'll get a no Let's get a list of everybody that wasn't here and we'll talk about them. That's a great idea. Who no. have you not seen yet? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I haven't been looking. Okay. I haven't been looking. Everybody's here. I'm not going to talk about anything. All right. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, and, the, and, and then that thing between the burial and the resurrection and what was he doing between talking to Mary that morning and uh, coming to see the disciples in the afternoon. Okay. So I just want to say a statement. I want you to hashtag two words. When Jesus died on the cross, it was finished. Hashtag finished. Finished. When Jesus died on the cross, it was finished. But when Jesus rose from the dead, it was complete. Mm, okay. Hashtag complete. When Jesus died on the cross, it was finished. But when he rose from the dead, it was complete. And we're going to have to go backwards before we go forward. So let's look at John chapter 14. Verses 1 through 4. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. You want to read that for us? Randy, it's right there if you want to okay. do it Okay, all right. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. Okay, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. 
believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. That that verse you just read, uh, my father's house has many, what does it normally say? Mansions. That's a terrible, terrible word. Unless your room is as big as a mansion. There's you some perspective. What do you, what do you picture heaven to be like? Germantown? I mean, or South Southwind? I don't know. I think if it's taken, if it took seven days to make the world that we live in and he's been gone this long, I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. I've heard me say that before. But the thing is, <laughs> well, if you think... I don't think you're the first person to coin that <laughs> phrase. Nice try, Douglas. Oh, man. Um, I just... I just I, I don't know. You don't know what? I do. So, it took it took God six days to make the world. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's been working on houses for us for 2,000 years. That's a lot of people. It's kind of like the angels are up there. <laughs> Somebody got saved. Somebody got saved. He's like, oh, hell. <laughs> I got to build another house. No, oh, I don't, I don't, I, no, I don't believe that. Well, it ain't going to be like one of those like uh, no. prefab <laughs> things that you just like put up in a day. I don't think we're going to get the heaven. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get the heaven. And Jesus probably doesn't say, oh, hell, no way. But no, we're, he we're wouldn't. Probably not, well, he may, you don't know that. I don't think we're going to get to heaven and be like, oh, man. Hey, Jesus, where's my house? Maybe it'll be like that. We're not going to look at Jesus and say, where's my house? It won't be like the good place, that show. We were like, this is not my house. <laughs> There's nothing in it that I like. <laughs> Nowhere else in all of Scripture is that word translated mansion. So if your Bible says mansion, you need to scratch a line through it. Because oh, that... Really? Yeah. Okay. No. It's no, a no. big, big house with lots and lots mm -hmm. of rooms. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You. The, 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 the problem with this interpretation is this is John 14, 15, and 16 is the conversation in the upper room. Okay. And he is not talking about the second coming. He's talking about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's not talking about going away for 2,000 years and building houses. Okay. He's, he's talking about, I'm going to go away for a little while. And he's, he's talking about now. So let's jump down to verse 23. So that, that's a big deal about reading things in context. You'll, you'll pull these things out of places because you don't know what happened during those spaces and you'll use it for what you want it to be. Like, sure. he's going to build me some mansions and some houses and he's been up there 2,000 years doing it. Oh, crap. The other one got saved. Get, get my hammer. But he's not talking about that in John 14, 15, or 16. He's talking about, I'm going away for a while right now and I'm coming back. He's talking about the resurrection. Three days. So let's look at verse 23. I think it's verse 23. Yeah, verse 23. Read, ver read verse 23. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. We will come to them and make our home with them. It, the people who love me, the people who obey me, uh, we're not going to go there. He's going to come here. Very, very, very important. So the word mansion is really room, dwelling place, abode. I'm going to come make my room, my dwelling place, my abode with you. Uh, and heaven, look, you might get you a mansion, but heaven ain't full of mansions. Heaven's full of God. Uh, there's no room for anything else. Uh, but we'll talk about that another time. I don't think it's going to really matter. We're just going to be not, so excited it, to be there. It's not going to matter. Uh, and heaven is going to be back here. Remember, I'm coming back yeah. there. Yeah. Heaven's going to come out of the sky, and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Right. And there will be a cube. But And that cube, people say, well, that cube isn't going to be big enough. I think it's 12,000 miles in every direction or something like that. That's a big cube. Yeah. But it also has doors and gates, which means you can come in and out of that cube and go. That's nuts. 
to infinity and beyond. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> There's a snake. There's a snake in There's my boot. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's move forward with this. <laughs> Jesus was telling the disciples in John 14, 15, and 16, you can't dwell where my Father is right now. The Old Testament saints did not go to heaven. In the state, in the condition, in the form that you're in, you can't dwell there with my Father right now. But soon you'll be able to. For a little while, I'm going to go away, and then I'm going to come back. And a lot of people keep reading that like, I'm going to go away as in when he ascended back into heaven to stay, and then he's going to come back. He's talking about his first. He's talking about the death and the resurrection. Gotcha. I'm going to go away for a little while, and then I'm going to come back. Uh, John uh, chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. Let's look at that. Have I already have I skipped this Where? one? Where are you going? Let's look at this one first. John 13, 33, and 34. Go. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me and... As I said to the Jews, stop, you're in my space. Where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Again, he's talking to them before his, his, his death, burial, resurrection thing, and he says, uh, little children, I shall be with you a little while. You're going to seek me. You won't be able to find me. Where I'm going, you cannot come. Everybody cannot, hashtag cannot come. Where I'm going, you cannot come right now because there's not room for you. Mm. There's not space for you. Can I just take like a pause for a second? I can't, I can't <clears throat> not say it. On 34, he says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Not new. Wait. <laughs> But then there's a there's a semicolon, and he says it again, as I have loved you, yeah. that you also love one another. So he like puts that extra. That's the new emphasis. All that other was Old Testament law, right? Because as he had loved us, meaning he laid down his life. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna be with you a little while longer. You'll see me. You won't find me where I go. You cannot come. A new commandment I give you that you love one another. <clears throat> yeah, throws me way off. <laughs> <laughs> this is not talking about the second coming. It's talking about the resurrection. And it's so important that you hear everything we say today because this is part one of two. And tomorrow is when this is going to become extremely clear. What we're talking about, mansions, rooms, space, and houses. Uh, God, before Jesus, did you realize that people... When they died before Jesus, those who were followers of Jehovah did not go to heaven. They didn't ascend. No, no. They did not ascend. They descended. Not to Hades, but they descended into Sheol where Abraham's bosom was. They were in a holding pattern until Jesus came because you cannot go to the Father any other way except through Jesus Christ. Right. There were no homes built. Listen, we're talking past tense. There, there were no spaces. There were no rooms. There was no place for them except for Abraham's bosom. Jesus hasn't been up there building spaces and places. The spaces and places were built in one day. Mm. Which day was that? It wasn't the crucifixion. No. The crucifixion, it was finished. The resurrection, it was... Completed. Complete. In my father's house that day was enough space for all the Old Testament prophets to go, but we're we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's not go that far just just yet. But you're literally building a foundation. <clears throat> I'm building a major foundation for what happened the day between the garden when Mary saw him, and he tells Andrew, "Put your hand in my side." Something huge happened that day. Lots of construction. Amanda Farrell, that very well could be where the concept of purgatory came from. Probably. But that space is empty now. Um, that there is, no se there is no separation anymore. So yeah, when someone died and was absent from the body pre-cross, they were in Abraham's bosom, uh, a place of paradise nonetheless, yeah. and they looked across a chasm at those who were in Hades. But that, 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 that space is empty now. But Hades still exists. You didn't. You do need to know that Hades and hell are the same. 
But the Hades that exists right now is nothing compared to the hell that will exist later. Oof. The lake of fire is not yet. The lake of fire is coming. We'll talk about hell sometime. It's, it's way worse than fire. Oh, the fire yeah. is nothing compared to what hell is. Right. All right, so let's, let's keep moving forward. Uh, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house. There's many rooms. Uh, there will be no unbelievers after the second coming, okay? So when he's saying that there's going to be people who don't believe, there's going to be people who don't trust, uh, but everyone's going to believe at this moment, that's the second coming. Uh, people have a problem believing backwards, but n no one in the freaking world or heaven or hell or anywhere else is going to have a problem when he steps through the clouds. Right. Every unbeliever will become a believer that day. It will be too late, but they will become a believer that day. John chapter 14, verse 30, um, I think is where I want to go. Let's read verse John 14, 19 real quick. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. John 14, 22. Judas, not Iscariot, or Isker, I never said it right, Iscariot, said to him, Not the betrayer. Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? They're just seeing John 16. These eyes, aren't they? Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. John 16, we're going to read verses. Uh, let's read verse 16 real quick. Okay. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after... And then after a little while, Some you big will words see me. Get you I know, like A's and well, D's. <laughs> I'm reading it at the same time and and like comprehending it. It's like Jesus and Fort John. This is extremely important again in John 14, 15, and 16. This is the entire conversation in the upper room, the last night of Passover, the last night of him having the meal, the Lord's Supper, the last meal with them. He is talking to them about. Ever, not things in the way future, but things that were going to happen that night and for the next couple of days. In they a little while. They weren't getting it. They weren't. I know. We wouldn't have either. We've had 2,000 plus years <laughs> oh, to no. talk about it. Oh, no. They were living in the <laughs> moment. Can't you look back on your life and say, God, I wish I'd known. Man, had Why I only I know? had I only known, had I listened to somebody. Yeah. You know, they're up in heaven right now, and we're up here talking about Scripture and arguing and not knowing what it means, and they're just like, oh, they're so stupid. They've been talking about this for 2,000 years with some <laughs> of the best minds of their time, and they mock us, and we were living in it. Mm. So anyway, yeah, he's saying in a little while you're not going to see me, so that's an important phrase, in a little while. Everybody hashtag in a little while. little while. Um, in a little while, uh, he's going to be dead, and he's going to resurrect, not the second coming. John... <clears throat> Chapter 20 is what leads us to this and brings us to tomorrow. So we can't spend a whole lot of time on this. Okay. But uh, I want you to read John chapter 20, verse 1 through 14. Go. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The empty tomb is the heading. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then... She ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, which is John, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter. John is full of humility. He, he is. I am the. The disciple that he's he loves the most. He's oozing just humility. And I'm the he? fastest. <laughs> Beat Peter there. Go. I'm not going to say my name, but you're going to know who it is. <clears throat> so they both ran together. So they both ran together, and the other disciple, John, outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been placed around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first, first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. 
They're just not getting it yet. They just believed he was gone. Yeah. Not that he was risen. Gotta keep going? Yep. Okay, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. <clears throat> and she saw two angels in white, in white, sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Stop right there. Verse 12, the Ark of the Covenant became flesh. The angel at the head and the angel at the foot where Jesus laid in the middle. Oh, I have never seen that before. It's the mercy seat. Wow, that's amazing. Keep going. Okay, then. Um, it was a picture of what was going on in heaven on earth. Mm. I will be done on earth that as it is in heaven. Me. Keep going. Gosh. This is a lot of stuff I know. right here. I'm it's sorry. so deep, y'all. It's just deep. Get it's your a boots. lot. Get your boots. It's a You're lot. You're going to need them. Keep going. Okay. She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know it was Jesus. Let's just stop. Okay. She'd spent two and a half years with him. She knew what Jesus looked like. Some theologians say it was because he was beaten so badly that she could not recognize him. False. This woman took him off the cross. She knew exactly what he looked like. She knew exactly how bad it was. She knew exactly how pitifully they had wrapped him. She was going to take care of that business that morning. Okay? She knew exactly what he looked like. But he had come back different. He'd come back from his three days in the tomb his three days in Sheol, his three days in Abraham's bosom, he come back transformed. He come back different. He had to show the scars because he was so beautiful. Mm. He had to show the scars just to prove that this beautiful body was him because they had seen him when it was not him. But it, but it gets way deeper than that. Uh, they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to these two angels because they've taken away my Lord. Now, when she'd said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you, uh, you know, doing all these things? Uh, and, and she turned him and said, Rabboni, meaning she recognizes it as him. And then verse 17, Jesus said, you can't touch this. Yep. Don't touch me. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. You need to stop right there and make sure you set your alarm for seven o'clock in the morning. Because I'm about to tell you guys what happened between that morning when Mary saw him and Jesus says, do not touch me. Mm. What happened that day, because we don't see him again until that night. What happened that whole day? That Where was he? Who saw him? What was he doing? And then that night, he tells Thomas, touch me. stick your fingers in my side. Touch the nail-scarred hands. What was different? What had changed? Where had he been? And had he built all the mansions? Pray us out. Ooh, are you ready for tomorrow? Tomorrow's going to be all my goodness. Oh my goodness, y'all better tune in. Okay, Father, thank you so much for today. God, um, as I look out the window, I, it just looks like it's going to be beautiful today, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that, Lord. Um, and right now, I just lift up the the ones that have been through the storms recently, God, whether it's the actual tornadoes that have been going on life. or just life in general, God, whatever the storm is, Father, I thank you that the seas still obey your name. Peace. Peace, yes. you know. Um, and Lord, I just thank you that your word is so alive and so deep that... I just don't know if we're ever going to get it all. You know, I just don't think we'll ever get it all. And it's just overwhelming for that. But God, I just thank you that you give us little pieces of it all the time and that we can read it like the daily news. And um, it is living and breathing and sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes. So Father, let us go about our day-to-day -day with purpose and to check out those uh, opportunities that you give us on a daily basis to impact the world for your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Hit the hearts, hit the likes. Go crazy on those right now. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. Get this out of your page. Yes. Share this out. Make sure that people see today's. If you see someone that was not here today, would you please share this out and say, if you missed today, you've got to catch today because yes. tomorrow's not yes. going to make a whole lot yes. of sense. They really need both parts because part one and two are really just one. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hashtag. Do it with me, Doug. Hashtag shared. Hashtag live. Hashtag recorded. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>